Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today I'm making a video on how to buy NFTs on OpenSea. So the video is going to be pretty short and sweet. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then from there, I'm going to talk about two projects or two NFT projects that I own or have owned and that I'm actively trading. I'll show you how it works and how you buy and sell. And I'll show you how uh, or what things I look for when trying to buy and sell them. So nothing in this video is financial advice. I'm just showing you what I have and what I'm doing, how to do it. And there's more NFT marketplaces than just OpenSea, but um, just for because this is the most popular one and it's easy for me to use and I'm familiar with it, I'm going to show you OpenSea. Uh, so the website is OpenSea.io. So every time I'm buying NFTs on a marketplace, you got to make sure you're at the right website. You don't want to click on a scam website and then find out that uh, it, you know, after you connect your wallet, your funds are gone because you connected to a, a scam website. So OpenSea.io is the website. And from there, you're going to create an account. So you'll go over here, create an account. Uh, I already did that, but it'll just ask you for your email address and have you create a password. And then you'll connect your wallet and you're good to go. So I use MetaMask for this, but there's multiple wallets that are compatible. So here's what you do. I'll show you how to connect a wallet real quick. All right, so these are your options. It looks like there's more options too. If you show more, uh, Trust Wallet is a solid one that I use, Ledger obviously, and uh, MetaMask. I use MetaMask Wallet for this. So I'm gonna connect to my MetaMask Wallet. I'm not sure if it's gonna show you what's popping up on my screen right now because sometimes it doesn't, but I'll do this real quick and show you, just in case. All right, so this is what it looks like right now. If you can't see, it's going to have me select my account. I'm going to hit next and then continue, and I'm going to connect my account. So now I'm connected, and my wallet is now um, connected to the website, and I'll be able to see all my NFTs associated my, with my wallet address. Now, this is not all of them, but for whatever reason, not all of them pop up on OpenSea. But if I want to buy and sell an NFT, this is what I do. Let's say I want to buy a board eight. So you find your collection and it's pretty easy to buy and sell it. So I'm going to show you real quick some features on here and then show you how to buy and sell. So one thing I always look at at any NFT project I'm interested in is the floor price to see what it's actively trading at. And as you can see, 76 ETH for these, pretty expensive, uh, but this is a solid project. If I had, the liquidity to buy one of these things and not have too many eggs in one basket, I would probably do it. 3% um, listed. So this is a really good number. The reason why there would only be 3% listed instead of like 20% or 15% of people trying to sell uh, is because there has to be some sort of incentive financially for them to be holding on to it. So uh, obviously the incentive that they're offering is pretty good because otherwise there would be more listed in my opinion. Uh, it'll show you the unique amount of owners. 60% is really good. Um, so a couple things you can do. If you want to buy a floor one to trade and you don't really care about using it in their games or however, whatever the utility of these NFTs are, um, each of these apes will have different abilities, most likely, or different clothes, for example. And if you know what you're looking for and you've done the research and you say, I want to find, I only want to buy a board ape that has you know, a cowboy hat. So you can go and filter those out so it's only the ones with cowboy hats. Or maybe you know that the ones who have, a, let's see, the ones who have a dumbfounded look on their face are worth more. So you can click on that and find dumbfounded cowboy hat apes. So that's just kind of how you filter it out. With a lot of NFT projects, or most of them on here, you can filter them out with uh, through their rarity to, for which ones are more valuable. Uh, so that's kind of how you do it. If you wanted to buy one, let's say I want to buy this one right here. You can add it to your cart and simply buy the listing price of eight, um, pay 81 ETH for it, or you can make an offer. So sometimes I do this. If you're looking at offers, you can see the highest offers are 73 wrapped ETH, 70 wrapped ETH, uh, etc. One thing you got to be careful with is sometimes people will create multiple OpenSea accounts and bid on their own NFTs to make it look like there's more of a demand for it and try to get people to buy it. Uh, you just gotta be careful with that. In this case, I doubt that's the case. Um, I mean, it very well could be with these two, 
uh, but I am doubting it. But sometimes it'll be really obvious. There's a project that's not popular whatsoever, and then you'll see someone offering a huge amount, way more than it's worth. So just keep that in mind. Um, but if I want to buy it, let's say I make an offer, and I don't have this much ETH right now to buy it, but if I wanted to, let's just offer 0.5 Ethereum, which apparently I don't have that either on here. Um, let's do 0.3 Wrapped Ethereum. So I'm going to make this offer. Right now it's confirming it in my wallet. It's asking me to switch to the Ethereum mainnet because I was on the Polygon mainnet. So now I am signing my offer and <laughs> hopefully I get lucky. There's pretty much no chance that this is going to happen, but if it did happen, then that person probably accidentally accepted my offer. Oops. So with that being said, uh, it's as simple as doing that. If I wanted to sell an NFT, I could just go to my profile. I have this uh, Scotty Pippen NFT shoe here. Someone's already offered me um, this amount for it, which I personally am waiting until the price gets back to the mint price of 0.2 Ethereum before I'm going to consider selling this one. Um, but yeah, I could accept one of these offers right now and get paid, or I could list it. Um, Let's see where can I where can I list that real quick. So the other thing is when you're selling NFTs on OpenSea, you uh, you're gonna have to pay some fees. So there's a 10% creator fee associated with this collection, and then a two and a half percent platform fee by OpenSea. So really, if I sell this for 0.87 ETH, I'm actually going to get 12.5% less than that. Plus, or take away also an Ethereum gas fee that might be involved. Um, so yeah, this will show the price history here. But if I want to just list this for a different price. Oh, here we go. Sell. And then I can either set up a timed auction or I can set a fixed price. It'll show you based on my top trait what the floor price is worth for it, or just the floor in general for all of these. So let's say I want to sell it for, you know, I'll list it for 0.2 ETH right now. I will let it go for that price. In fact, I'll let it go for 0.19. I want this sale to be only one day. And I'm going to complete my listing. It's asking me to approve this, this, uh, this listing. There's a dollar thirty gas fee. You know, I'll just pay the dollar thirty gas fee because actually, you know what? I'm not going to list it right now because I really don't anticipate it selling for that price, and I'm not interested in selling it. But that's how you would do it if you wanted to. Uh, so yeah, basically that's how you buy and sell NFTs on OpenSea. It's pretty simple. One thing to consider: the other project that I wanted to show you. And I'll talk more about this project too. Is the the Trump digital trading cards? I got a really good deal on these at the mint. Uh, I bought five of them, and I've sold them all by now because I am I do plan on holding one for a long time, but I'm waiting for the price to drop more. And based on my experience in the market, I think it will. I just need to be patient. The FOMO part of me is kicking in, and I'm like, I need to make sure I have one of these for the long term, um, and I want to buy one, but I'm gonna wait for a better opportunity. So basically. These NFTs are created on the Polygon blockchain. And so what you need to do to buy and sell these is you need to, on MetaMask, connect, uh, add the Polygon mainnet to it. And there will be videos going on on how to add custom RPCs um, so that you can transact with Polygon and other blockchains. Um, but essentially, I have some wrapped Ethereum. And I'm assuming if you've never bought NFTs before, you're not going to have any wrapped Ethereum on Polygon. So before you can make an offer, you need to make sure you get that. So you can go to Polygon's bridge. So if you come here, it's wallet.polygon.technology, and you'll go to the bridge. So it's going to give you the option to um, take funds, take Ethereum from the Ethereum chain. So when you come up here, I have my, thun my funds on Ethereum. I have 0.38 ETH right here. I'm going to switch back to Polygon now. So when I go back to the bridge, it's going to show me on my Ethereum chain, I should have that 0.3 Ethereum, 0.38, and I do. So let's say I want to take some of that, so 0.2, and I want to bridge it to the Polygon chain. I would just hit transfer, 
I would continue. There would be a gas fee. So it would be $5.93 of the gas fee. And then I would continue on that process and bridge it. And it'll load for a little bit while it's kind of transacting. And then you'll have to do one more confirmation where you hit confirm. And then give it some time and your funds will be transferred over to the Polygon mainnet. And then you'll have wrapped ETH. So replay this part of the video if you need to. If you want to do the step-by-step, -step, it's really that simple. Just make sure you're on the right website. Wallet.polygon.technology. Go to the bridge. Bridge your Ethereum over to Polygon. It'll come out on the other end as the wrapped Ethereum, like it shows right here. And then, because you're using the same wallet, it's automatically going to be available on OpenSea. So if I want to, let's see, I want to buy a really rare one. So there's 45,000 total. I want to buy one in the top 1,000. This one is ranked 380. The price isn't even that bad on this, in my opinion. Um, so what I'm going to do, you can see there's an offer of 0.475 Ethereum. This is actually wrap Ethereum it's asking for because it's on Polygon. Uh, I am going to, I would definitely pay that price. So I'm going to make an even better offer for 0.5 Ethereum. And I want this offer to expire in three days because I think that it'll be worth well more than 0.5 Ethereum for the next three days. I'm going to make the offer. And now instead of the, and you might not be able to see my screen, but it's just confirming this. Uh, Polygon has cheaper gas fees, so I really don't mind right now. Even if the sale never goes through, I'm only spending a couple cents um, to, to send out this transaction. So I'm just going to confirm it. And now my offer has been submitted. It pops up right here. Uh, in three days, it'll expire, but hopefully this order goes through and they accept it because uh, this is a pretty pretty rare Trump NFT, and I do expect these to hold value in the long term. Um, so yeah, OpenSea is not the only website you can go to. There are other ones as well. Rarible.com is one. And it's asking me right now to switch networks back to the Ethereum mainnet, which is fine. So if I'm on Rarible right now, it says there's 0% fees. So for example, OpenSea has 2.5% fees. Um, here you would save a little bit on fees, but because it's not as popular, let me show you. If I find the Trump collection on here, You can see all of these listed, right? So you can buy these. However, if you really look at it, these are also including the ones listed on OpenSea. So what you would do here, if you wanted to buy one to avoid those fees on OpenSea, you would have to click the ones that are on Rarible. And there's only three. And they're listed for well over the floor price. So I'm not going to buy any of these. If I'm going to buy them, I'm going to buy them on OpenSea. Um, so one thing for me, before I let you guys go, is the Trump trading cards. This is a project that I'm comfortable trading, actively trading. Like I said, I started off with five of these. I quickly sold two or three of them just to make sure I got my profit or got my initial investment back with some profits. So I sold three and essentially doubled my investment. And then I plan on holding one for the long term and just trading another one, um, trading it when it pumps and then buying back when it dumps. We got a nice little pump, which convinced me to sell all my last two. And so I did, I got really good profits on that. And, you know, as much as I, so I ended up selling my last one at 0.75 ETH. The, the floor price is 0.46 right now. However, I do think it's going to potentially go lower. You know, I've been in crypto for a couple of years, um, really several years, but just really deep into crypto for the last couple of years. And based on my experience, I know as much as I really want to make sure I'm holding on to one of these for the long term, I know right now the price is probably not going to go to the moon. And if it does go up really high, it's probably going to bounce back. So I'm waiting for a better opportunity. Um, granted, who knows what could happen? Maybe it'll never be this low again. But my opinion is that the price is going to drop even more. I could probably pick up another of these around 0.3 Ethereum. And then at that point, um, make even more profits because I do, I do picture these uh, being worth a lot of money at some point. Within the next couple of years, I ex expect several pumps. And then in the long term, I expect these to hold a lot of value. But this is just speculative. Uh, I have reasons behind it, but it could go to zero for all you know. You just got to make the decision on your own, do the research before buying.
And going back to the Scotty Pippen NFTs, I just want to show you guys why I got involved, uh, why the price is low now, and what my thoughts are on the future of it. Again, not financial advice. This is really not financial advice. This, to me, is more of a fun project that I have interest in because my son and I both like basketball. I think there's potential um, to make some money from it, but here's what I'm looking at. So I bought one of these. The Mint sold out in about a minute. And there was only a total of 1,000 to ever exist. And essentially, they are MetaWear sneakers you can wear anywhere in the Metaverse. And also, for example, one out of 1,000 people gets a hometown tour and dinner with Scotty. Two out of 1,000 get golf outing and lunch with Scotty. 33 get physical signed sneakers by Scotty Pippen. So it'll be your, your NFT. You'll get that actual shoe signed by Pippen. And then there is... Um, the opportunity for everyone else to buy their physical shoe. So all a thousand can buy that shoe. Um, and, and then 33 people get a hundred dollar gift card to a notable sneaker brand. So there's a couple incentives to, to get involved. At the Mint, they did not reveal like who won or who got these perks. But if you were holding for a couple weeks, then they did the reveal. Unfortunately, in, in mine, I did not get one. So I, I tried to mint, but it sold out so fast I couldn't get it. So I ended up buying it pretty quick right off of the secondary marketplace here on OpenSea. And I paid a premium for it. And this was one where I just made some profits with some other NFTs. And I'm like, you know what, maybe I'm overpaying, but I'm excited to have a chance to, to get some of these things, but also to have a, a metaverse shoe. And my thoughts were, there's a, there's a supply of a thousand. And there's a huge demand for it. I mean, this was, it appeared to have a huge demand. It sold out so quick, but this was on the front page of OpenSea. So obviously they, um, the project paid marketing costs to, to get that listed on the front page of OpenSea. Um, but I looked into the project before buying Orange Comet. And they partnered with AF, AMC for some NFTs and some other um, popular popular groups. So I looked at it thinking, okay, this is a pretty good solid group. They have a decent sized Twitter following, um, Scotty Pippen, obviously. And so yeah, this could potentially have a chance to make a lot of money. Let me get back to where I was. So what happened was after the reveal, the price just tanked. So people found out, you know, hey, they didn't win this stuff. Um, so now people are selling their, their common shoes for less, you know, less than half of the mint price. And the real reason for this is marketing. There's like no marketing going on whatsoever. Scotty Pippen tweeted about it when the reveal came out. Um, but there's really, there's really no marketing. But the thing is, I kind of look at this as a possible hidden gem and it could be a bust for all we know, but there is some utility and I'm happy to, I'm not happy to lose, but I'm more than willing to accept loss on this. Because at the end of the day, I have the opportunity to buy a really cool shoe from Scotty Pippen that's unique to everyone else. Uh, because they're not making more of these shoes. At least they say they're not. So, one thing I look at is the activity. I've been watching all the sales. And I think we hit a floor. This is I, I bought this one the other day for 0.09 Ethereum. I think we're near a floor. I really don't see these getting much lower than they are now. And especially once all of the utility and that comes with these shoes is is announced and released and they integrate it into the metaverse i think this is going to have a lot more value especially when they come out with more details about how you can get it, get your physical shoe and how you can equip it on your metaverse characters and stuff in the future so i'm making some off some low ball offers on a lot of these right now one of them was accepted i do plan to find some more rare ones for example right now if i want to buy one that is a physical sneaker signed by Scotty Pippen, one of the winners. You can look at the sales. I mean, these have been going, for, this one sold for 0.44 Ethereum, which is just over double the mint price. Uh, yeah, this physical copy, 0.27 Ethereum. I would have to happily, happily, 1.7. I would happily pay these prices to get one of these. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to um, put on an offer. Granted, not a lot of them are selling, the last one that sold was 21 days ago. Um, yeah, so people aren't selling these, but I'm going to put in some offers and try to get my hands on one. I do think that all it would take is just um, a 
handful of new people to get introduced to the project, so some marketing, and they can sweep the floor and get us back to mint prices or higher. So if you look at it, uh, let's see, take off the filter real quick. If you look at it, the mint price is 0.2. So I'm going to see how many of these are under 0.2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14. Of course, uh, my screen is freezing. All right, so 14, 15, 16. So there's 16 shoes, it looks like, underneath the mint price. All it would take is for 16 people to come in and buy these shoes, scrape the floor, and now the price from there is uh, going to be higher than the mint price. So it just takes a new wave of investors, a new, a new group of people to get eyes on this that have interest, and uh, the price is going to go up. Right now, it's a lot of the same people buying and trading with each other, trying to make short-term gains. Um, right now, 50% unique owners, 16% are listed. So yeah, I'm interested in right now. I'll probably put in an offer, actually, on one of these right now. And when I do put in an offer, I want one with more rarity. And I'm going to try to see if someone listed one um, really cheap. So I want a physical sneaker. I'd love to have a signed Scotty Pippen shoe. Uh, the cheapest one right here is 0.69 Ethereum. You know, I want to find one that looks cool too. I feel like this person, these people would be more um, primed to accept an offer since they're the ones listing it for the lowest price. So I am going to actually offer it on the cheapest one here. I'm going to look for the best offer, which is 0.0875 ETH. I'll happily pay more for that. So I'm going to offer, and I could do less, but I am going to offer, actually, let me just make sure that this was the physical shoe. Yeah, it was, okay. So I'm going to make an offer. I'm going to offer 0.2, which is the mint price. And for to me, this is a steal. I'm going to get a shoe, like a Scotty Pippen shoe, if this is accepted. And then I still own the NFT at the mint price. Like, it's a no-brainer for me. So I'm going to make this offer. Right now, if you can't see it, my MetaMask is popping up asking me to sign it and confirm the transaction. So there you go. I'm signing it. I don't have to pay any more than that because the seller is the one who eats all the fees. And because I think there's an opportunity to get my hands on another one of these, I'm going to offer... The same thing over here. All right, and I just signed the transaction. So now I have two offers in. As you can see, my offer is the best offer by far. And hopefully someone's desperate for some money and they want to click that sell button because I think that'd be a, again, I think it'd be a steal. I could probably triple my money on that pretty quick, or I could just hold on to it and just wait for my shoe and then see what the value is later on. But yeah, so that's kind of how you buy and sell NFTs on OpenSea. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or on the Discord. Um, but thanks for watching the video and I'll make another one soon. See ya.